What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to the Leeds United Liverpool post-match analysis and reaction video and I can't believe that Liverpool scored 6 goals away from home to a bottom 10 side because guess what, away from home Liverpool have failed to score against the current bottom half of the table, bottom 10 of the table. Yes, we have beaten Aston Villa 3-1 away from home when they were in the bottom half in 12th place but since then they have risen it to the in the table and what a performance by Liverpool and especially I'm especially happy for Diogo Jota who scored after more than a one whole year without the Liverpool goal I can't believe I'm saying it because Diogo Jota is one of the best finishers in Liverpool and a lot of Liverpool fans uh, were willing to sell Diogo Jota just because he hasn't scored a goal in a, in a year but he has been out injured so so much and he needs to find his rhythm again but I think this was the game where Diogo Jota truly came back and a brilliant brilliant attacking performance by Liverpool yes defensively Konate made a huge mistake there which Leeds, Leeds scored from but uh, that was a small blip in an otherwise brilliant game for Liverpool and we also will talk about Trenox Ronald's performance but if you are happy and excited that Liverpool have won this game 6 one leave a like on this video and uh, let me know in the comments below who was your man of the match and do you think Liverpool can still get top four I already have written Liverpool off but if Newcastle lose to Tottenham and Liverpool beat Nottingham Forest two results which is uh, quite unlikely not certain but it can happen definitely then Liverpool will be only six points behind Newcastle in the top four race and I mean last season Liverpool were with the sim same no no not last season sorry two seasons ago Liverpool had the same point study after like 28 29 games that this season we went on a on unbeaten run 10 games eight wins two draws zero defeats and Liverpool finished in third place I'm not saying history will repeat itself because this Liverpool team is much worse than the team two, two years ago. A lot more inconsistent, defensively a lot more shaky and, uh, and also um, and that team didn't have any proper centre-backs. Uh, this team they, it has issues all over the pitch. But with, with uh, Luis Diaz back and uh, with Jota back, Liverpool have the firepower to blow any team away. And this is what's most frustrating to me. I mean, how can we lose to Leeds United at home and beat them away 6-1? We are clearly the better team if you look at just the individual players but uh, Liverpool have these, these so many inconsistent results. We lose to Nottingham Forest away, we lose to Bournemouth, we lose to Brighton, we lose to Wolves, we lose to Brentford, we lose to so many teams away from home and then somehow we turn up at Leeds United and score six goals and we also will score, we'll talk about Trenox Ronalds uh, like inverted uh, fullback role uh, or maybe Maybe even playing as an uh, in the attack, Liverpool used Tranox Ronald kind of in the midfield, in the right centre midfield role, and he was dictating play, spreading passes like his prime David Beckham playing in midfield, and also. Trent got two assists, the first one to Cody Gakpo. It was a controversial one and then because it was the first goal and uh, in the build-up it was clear that the ball hits Trenox Ronald's hand but uh, the VAR uh, used the new handball rule which is um, that if the handball is not immediately before the goal, if there is a phase in play be before after the handball and if there are a few passes after the handball, if the player doesn't directly score with his hand or assist with his hand then VAR won't uh, blow that up whether you agree or disagree with that handball rule that's the rule that's why VAR allowed it in my interpretation but if you know a different handball rule let me know in the comments below the second goal is equally brilliant Mo Salah with a fantastic finish and Diogo Jota even though he hasn't been scoring goals lately, he still gets a lot of assists in the Premier League. He's one of the top assist guys in the Premier League. And then, at the start of the second half, exactly what you don't want to do. Give the ball to Leeds United when you are the last man. Konate, he just didn't anticipate Leeds United's, uh, you know, brilliant um, counter-pressing. But uh, what Liverpool did 
is react to the setback brilliantly. Curtis Jones, who also had probably his best game this season uh, after his long injury, he takes the ball past the Leeds United midfielder and then he threads a brilliant pass, brilliant through ball to Diogo Jota. Melier, the Leeds United goalkeeper, I think makes an error of judgment, comes out of this goal too early and uh, Jota has the easiest task to curl it around him and into the far corner and it was absolutely brilliant uh, goal. And then Liverpool were purring, Liverpool were absolutely like in their groove. Gakpo tees up Mo Salah, who has uh, the freedom of the penalty area and he curls it around the goalkeeper to make it 4-1. Salah even scored an offside goal, I think, uh, before that, after Liverpool scored the third. And then Jordan Henderson from the right-hand side. And Jordan Henderson sometimes played as a right winger today because Trent was in the middle of the midfield, spraying passes left and right acting as kind of a playmaker which really suits him because of his range of passing and because of his creativity. So sometimes Jordan Henderson was playing on the right hand side but sometimes it was Diogo Jota. Uh, this time Jordan Henderson from the right wing crosses it on the edge of the box and Diogo Jota on the half volley first time slots it home in off the post, an absolutely clinical, brilliant finish by Diogo Jota and that was 5-1 Liverpool and then the pick of the bunch, Trent Oxford-Arnold picks the ball up in the middle of the pitch and then he threads in an over-the-top through ball to Darwin Nunez who is onside, chests it down and very coolly slots it home. So happy for Darwin Nunez. He's back among the goals. That will do his confidence the world of good. And it was also so, so good to see Luis Diaz back in the team as a substitute. So this was like almost perfect performance by Liverpool and so happy for Jota, so happy for Darwin Nunez, so happy for Mo Salah who also, they all scored and it was really, really awesome. And I think uh, Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool should absolutely give Curtis Jones more chances and more playing time. And Jurgen Klopp is, was trying to play Diogo Jota and Curtis Jones into form by using him, play, play, playing them in the Liverpool side, even though they were out of form. Liverpool didn't have a lot to lose this season because we couldn't get much worse than we were in some of the previous games, like Bournemouth before weight. We were absolutely shocking. And it worked, because now Diogo Jota has scored two goals, got an assist, Curtis Jones got an assist and put in a brilliant performance in midfield. And now they are in form, brimming with confidence and hopefully we can keep this form going and fight for every point and try to just win as many games as possible between now and the end of the season. And we must qualify for Europe, even if it's the Europa League, which Liverpool haven't won under Jurgen Klopp yet. I would be happy with it. It's better than no European football. It's more revenue, more playing time for the young players as well. And uh, the one problem that Curtis Jones faces is he needs to stay fit more often, just like Diogo Jota. And uh, what I really like as well is how Anfield and the, uh, how, uh, the Liverpool crowd welcomed Luis Diaz back. It wasn't the, uh, at Anfield, it was at Allen Trolled, of course. But Luis Diaz's girlfriend, Gera Pons, has said this on Instagram. What immense admiration and pride you make us feel. The most sublime moment after all this recovery time is to see you enter the pitch again and that feeling that we missed so much and that obviously you more than anyone craved. Today I confirm that all the sacrifice and hard times throughout these months have been worth every second and that God is good and that his timing is perfect. I love you so much. I'm so happy to know that you are back doing that. What makes you happy, so happy? Let's go, my champ. Uh, so that's the kind of absolutely uh, brilliant uh, support that uh, Luis Diaz uh, deserves. And I think, uh, I think uh, that is wifey material, as, as one uh, a commenter, Liverpool fan, replied to that. And uh, this was probably Trenox Ronald's best performance of the season and this new role, this inverted fullback or midfield role, whatever you want to call it, I think it suits Trent perfectly, but uh, we still need to figure out how to cover for him in defense when he loses the ball. But if, uh, if that means Robertson can't bump forward that much, maybe that's, uh, you know, that hinders Robertson's game a little bit. But Trent Arsenal is the best passer 
in this Liverpool team. He can pick out players with his right foot like anybody, like Kev, prime Kevin De Bruyne in the Premier League. And uh, Trent will get so many more assists if he can play in this uh, deep lying midfield role because his long balls and his over the top through balls for uh, fast running players like Darwin Nunez, Gakpo, Salah. We will score so many goals from this and hopefully teams uh, won't figure out how to defend against it. But you have to also understand that some teams will just man mark Trent Alexander-Arnold and try to get him out of the game. So Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool have to come, out with, come up with different ways and different systems to counteract uh, you know, what the opposition is doing. But uh, I think this is uh, so far Trent's best game of the season and Trent, Jurgen Klopp said I think Darwin's goal comes from, a, from an exceptional pass. In the first half there is a couple of super passes to Mo Salah, one for Hendo, stuff like this. And also, the Jurgen Klopp reviews the best game we have played this season. Uh, quote, uh, a third Jamie Carragher spoke about individual errors and mistakes from Leeds. I thought we forced a lot of those. I, it was just a really good game. Sensational goals, counter-pressing wise. The best game for a long, long while, close to say decades, but I mean a long ago. So this was probably Liverpool's best pressing game, according to Jurgen Klopp, and that's, that's absolutely brilliant. And I mean, Jurgen Klopp's reaction on the bench when uh, there were three Liverpool players counter-pressing and harassing a Leeds United player and got the ball, it was absolutely hilarious. He was like, oh yes, <laughs> he was like slumping in his chair, it was absolutely hilarious. And uh, Jamie Carragher said, Jurgen Klopp said it, if the other teams do their job, they've got no chance, but Newcastle play Tottenham at the weekend, when these games come up, the result has to go for them, in terms of that being a draw. If Liverpool play like that and have a consistent consistent run of performances and get anywhere close to that tonight. Most of the games they you feel they should win in the run-in. But as we saw with the graphic tonight, it's the first time they have beaten someone below them away from home in the league this season. The problem is you can't trust Liverpool and you have never been able to trust them since the first game of the season at Fulham. That's not changed and that's why I still think between now and the end of the season we, are, we, are, we will still see two or three performances that leave you scratching your head. And that's, um, that's I think, a fair assessment. Until Liverpool win the last nine games of the season, we can't say that we, they will do because uh, there is no guarantee. Liverpool have been so inconsistent this season. I don't really trust them to have a proper run but Liverpool have some winnable games coming up for sure we play Nottingham Forest at home but then we have two very tough ones West Ham away and Tottenham at home West Ham away always a bogey ground for Liverpool and always a tough game and especially like now that West Ham are fighting for their lives to stay in the Premier League so West Ham away Tottenham at home that will be really really tough after that we play Fulham at Anfield Brentford at Anfield Leicester away, Aston Villa at Anfield and Southampton away. And uh, Southampton away might be the hardest game apart from Tottenham and West Ham. But I mean Fulham and Brentford have been pretty decent. Leicester are fighting for their lives. Uh, the only game that I think will be quite comfortable is Southampton on the last day of the season because they might get, get relegated by then or they might stay up by then. Usually teams who are fighting relegation they don't usually, you know, have anything to play for on the last day of the season. But this season, the relegation fight is so close. Who knows? It's anybody's guess what will happen at the bottom of the table. So let me know what do you think about everything that we talked about in the comments below. And thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a nice day. See you later. Goodbye.